Howdy y'all, Banjo Ben here. Welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. I'm honored to introduce this next lesson because a good friend of mine is guest teaching. This is Kristen Scott Benson. A lot of you are familiar with her. She's uh, an awarded banjo player, but also one of the most knowledgeable teachers out there. There's not many people that record and play and perform at a level as high as Kristen does and also has such an expert knowledge of teaching and how to help students get from one spot to another in their banjo journey. So it was a real treat to work with her. At one of my recent events, I invited her to come be a teacher. It was at my bluegrass and bass, and uh, she likes to fish, so she came on over. And she uh, had a very small class. I've kept it small on purpose. And so for this next lesson, you're going to have a ringside seat into what it was like to be at bluegrass and bass for one of these banjo sessions. She only has three students, and it's a unique uh, setup there because she's going to by process of participation, she's going to identify where these students are sitting in their banjo journey and help them actually collaborate in their learning. So here's what I encourage you to do. Get your banjo, watch this lesson, and not only learn the things that she teaches, because she's going to get into a lot of different subjects, but also learn how she gets the students to audit how they're playing. And let that encourage you to grow in community with other players which, by the way, I'd love to have you at one of my cabin camps in the future. You can go to BanjoBenEvents.com and learn that. If you're not a Gold Pit member here on the site, uh, I'd be honored to have you there. If you're a Gold Pit member, you get access to over 750 lessons for banjo, guitar, and mandolin. And without any further ado, I'll turn it over to my good friend, Kristen Scott Benson. So the first thing we talk about is trying to make our right hand roll sound like this. How do we get that evenness? So we talk about that and just use some uh, roles as examples. But really where we would spend the bulk of our time is um, we won't cover bends, but we'll cover all the other three, which is slides, hammer-ons, and pull-offs. The pull-off, especially in banjo, is kind of like the equivalent of the word the. <laughs> Like imagine if every time you said the, you said it wrong, you know, everybody would be like, oh. And this, it's such an essential part of, of banjo. Someone asked in the other group, can you tell me how to do a perfect pull-off? And the answer is yes, I can tell you how. Then you spend the rest of your life, me included, trying to do it and then trying to integrate that into having high standard pull-offs in the middle of rolls, okay? So that's one thing we could do where we're really focusing on what makes a good slide, what makes a good pull-off, what makes a good hammer-on, okay? The other thing we could do is just talk about some fundamental phrases that everybody has to know. I can tab it as I go. You know, one of the best goals for us all the time, it never goes away, is how do I sound better? And these are techniques that applied to everything you know are gonna make you sound better. And I think it speaks to a maturity when you're willing to go back and revisit that stuff and apply it to everything you do. That means you're really serious about improving and that's a great thing. Okay, so let's first just start with our right hands. Bluegrass banjo is all about the right hand. We, are, we probably all know that. Number one question that I get do both fingers have to be anchored? For a long time, I thought the answer was yes, only because when I started playing, I was 13, and it said in the Scruggs book that they should be. So I thought it has to be that way. If I remember correctly, my pinky started down, and I just hoped the ring would follow, and eventually it did. So I do anchor both, but we have so many amazing examples of players who are phenomenal and they only anchor the ring finger or they only anchor the pinky. So I think the answer is no. I think you do need something anchored though, okay? So let's start by showing me your right hand stance, okay, where your default position is. Okay, so we're gonna get really, uh, you know, up close and personal and I may even like grab your hands and, and that sort of thing. But I think the best policy, you know, all of us tried to do this to look like J.D. Crow, and it works for very few people. Uh, I think the best thing to do is to say, let your hand fall on the head of the banjo um, 
naturally and then alter that as minimally as possible. There are a few things we're looking for in our right hands, but we don't want to start playing too much with what our hand just naturally wants to do because the our, everybody's hand is made differently, so it's going to look different, and we have examples of that now where we can document. Look at this right hand, and they both sound great, okay? So, uh, looking good so far, uh, it looks like you anchor both, you anchor both, you're anchoring both. So, Amber, one thing I might suggest for you, it looks like you're kind of coming at the banjo like this, almost from a sideways stance. Ideally, if our, if our wrist is bent, it's bent more this way. So can I grab your hand? We would rather see bend your wrist, okay. more of that, okay? okay. So we, we tend not to want this. We want more of that. And then okay. you have to find that perfect balance for yourself, okay. okay? So we talked about your right hand position. There are some common goals that we're trying to achieve with our right hand. As a rule, we want to hit the strings as, this is talking about pick direction. We want to hit the strings as perfectly parallel as possible. Okay, so what I mean by that is we don't want this or this. See, it's scratchy. So you want your string to hit the pick as, as flush as possible. Now, it's like when we set intonation on a bridge. We can set the first string intonation and the fourth string intonation. But the second and the third just kind of have to be where they are because it's a line, right? If you get your thumb and your middle finger lining up really well, the index just kind of has to be where it is. Okay, so I say shoot for a perfectly flush thumb a perfectly flush middle and then just let the index go okay so that's our pick direction all right the next thing we want to talk about we're gonna we're gonna demonstrate this and and go around the room and try it um, the next thing we care about is uh, the timing of these roles because roles are the heart of what we do as banjo players so we want our roles at least in the beginning now we have examples of wonderful players who are very syncopated with their roles. So the beat to beat is completely uniform and consistent, but they may emphasize certain notes and play within a role some syncopated beats. At first, I think it's, it's beneficial to just play evenly, okay? Because it's what I call loping. If we do this from the start, it sounds better actually. It sounds more musical when you're starting and you're playing by yourself all the time, but then you can get in a bind because if you don't want to play syncopated, um, then you're in that habit and it's hard to get out. So I like just playing as even as possible. Most people now, so we've talked about pick direction and timing, and, and we're going to talk about tone. This is really all of it equals tone, right? We've talked about right hand positioning. We also want to talk about volume. Most people have strong fingers and weak fingers. Generally, the strong finger is going to be a middle finger or a thumb, and sometimes index fingers don't get hurt at all. You know, at first we want to play consistently even in volume and in timing. Okay, so it's good to take a simple roll. <laughs> And try to apply all of these skills to it and maybe I can see each of you do it and we can say hey your middle finger is a little strong or your index is a little weak or you're loping or you're too far from your bridge right so let's just take this roll let's play it together it's called an alternating thumb roll because every other notes the thumb right so we're gonna play three two five one three two five one and if you ever are trying to remember which is which, this makes it a five string banjo, right? Without this, it's a four string. This is the fifth string, the short string. So that means the bottom is the first, okay? So three, two, five, one, four, two, five, one. So I'll play it once and then you guys come in with me. So we'll go. 
Okay, now you guys try it. And try not to rush. Okay, that's good. Now, one thing to keep in mind too, for now, and when we're just talking about these first things, the middle finger will run the first string, the index will run the second string, and the thumb's gonna run all the rest, okay? So we're also, right hand-wise, we're talking about thumb, index, thumb, middle. Okay, so now let's go to Zach. Why don't you just loop that roll for us, and let's evaluate not just me, Keep in mind everything we've talked about. Let's see, uh, let's see what his hand looks like. I like it. Okay, let's each say something good about that. Let's start with you, Amber. What's something good that he did? Looks like a natural. Yeah, you know what? Uh, it is true, we, we're looking for an efficient right hand. We don't want our fingers just going everywhere. I used to stand in front of a mirror forever in my room and just go and watch my right hand and try to make it efficient. And you were, you were being super sweet, but he does. He has an efficient looking right hand. So that is a real, uh, concrete thing that's good. Okay, uh, Tommy, what's something you could say about Zach that's I, good? 